Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel, my name is Maika and today I would like to talk to you about the most in intimidating books on my shelves. I think I have more uh, and these are definitely intimidating for several reasons. Some of these are simply big, they are humongous. Or maybe I've heard stuff about the writing style that makes me a bit nervous about it. And some of these I did already read, uh, but most of it is actually unread. So let's start with the only book from this entire stack that I've read, and that is American Gods by Neil Gaiman. And this book, I think it's over 600 pages, if I'm not mistaken. Uh. Yes, it's over 600 pages and this book is quite a big one. It does feature one of my favorite topics, which is mythology. And that's why I wanted to read it in the end. And I finally got around to it a couple of years ago and it ended up being like one of my all time favorite reads. It is a bit slow at the start. I have to say like the first half of this book was quite slow and it made it quite hard to get through. And that's another reason why I was like, oh, this mythology stuff. and. You know, do I still know it? Can I find the links? I wasn't entirely sure. Um, and since this is sort of like, you know, the mo most of this most of this book is a road trip through rural small town America. So I wasn't sure whether I was gonna like that sort of thing. So that's another reason why I was like very sort of like umming and ahhing for a long time before I finally decided to read it. In the end, I just felt that this book just gave me everything I want from a good story. It's got a lot of fantastical animal elements, which is something Neil Gaiman is just really, really good at. And this is, was, I think, one of the first Neil Gaiman books that wasn't just short stories that I read by him. And so far, everything that I've read by him, I love. I just love. I still need to read the spin-off of this, which is the Nonzi Boys. I would love to read that too, but this is just, this made me want to read more Neil Gaiman and it was well worth it in the end, but it was a little bit intimidating, I have to say. Then I think the most notorious sort of like intimidating read on my shelves is Ulysses by James Joyce. Not only is this quite a long book, yeah, it's close to a thousand pages. This is also written in a stream of conscience kind of way. That's what I've heard. So it's sort of, there are no chapters. It's just like one big piece of text. And I believe it's like set around like the story of the Odyssey, but then, then it takes place in like Dublin. That's all I know. It's one of those books that I picked up when I was working at the library. It's like one of those library write-off kind of things. So this is also a heavy book, it's old, it's kind of smelly, which is another reason why I'm like, can I like stick my face in this for a thousand pages? I'm not even sure. This is never on any of the reading lists of what I had to read when I was in school. So that's definitely a reason why I never really picked it up. I have it on my shelves. This is one of those books where I'm like, you know, if I, when I retire, this is the kind of book I might then actually get around to. I'm not sure I'm ready for it yet. Do I want to call this an important book? I'm not entirely sure, but Jonathan Franzen's Freedom is a book that was very much raved about when it came out. It's already more than a decade ago that it was part of Oprah's selection. Um, and this is one of those books that I picked up because I heard so many people talking about it and then I just, because of its size, just never really read it. But then when I had, had a look at how many pages this is, it turns out it's just over like 550 pages. So it probably looks bigger than it actually is. And if I look at the typeset, it's not too, too small. So this could be one that I could actually read very, very quickly, but I also know that this is again about sort of like middle class, suburban, regular day life America, I think. And those are the kind of stories that, you know, those can be really good, but I also know that if they're not done to my liking, I can find them very tedious. And over 550 pages is a long time to spend with let's just say characters that aren't all that interesting. So this is one that I'm nervous about because I just heard it's like about very mundane things. And like I said, some of that can be really good, but I'm not entirely sure whether it will work in this one because I've never read it. So, and because it's so big, I just, I just kind of go like, mm, maybe I want to go for something shorter, you know? So that's why I haven't picked this one up. All right. So then uh, there's also a couple of books here that 
aren't that long, but that get either so much hype or the author is very hyped up that I'm just nervous reading their stuff. And the first one would be David Mitchell's The Thousand Autumns of Jacob de Zoet. Um, this is a novel about a Dutchman in Japan, I believe, like when the, the Netherlands had a little like trading post with Japan and they were the only country allowed to trade with Japan. It's sort of set in that uh, realm. And this is the David Mitchell novel I own because I own quite a few by him that I'm actually the most excited for. Like this is the one I want to get to the most because it is historical fiction. And I love historical fiction. It's just, it's David Mitchell. And I've never read anything by David Mitchell because his, just the amount of books that he has out and the sheer amount of mixed reviews that I've heard make me nervous to get started on these. I know a couple of my friends really like this, so I know I should just get to it, but it's just one of those things that I have sitting on my shelf to like one day read. This is again like just over 500 pages. It's, it's, it's big, but it's not super large. You know, it's not a thousand pages like Ulysses is, but it's just one of those things where I'm like, I, I'd hate to be disappointed by this, if that makes sense. That's why I don't want to read this yet. I know, I'm weird. And then what also goes, like that sort of reasoning also factors into this entire trilogy. This is Brandon Sanderson's The Mistborn Trilogy. A friend of mine bought me this book uh, a couple of years ago already, because this has a slightly cover from the ones that I bought later. Uh, and this is The Final Empire, which is the first book. It's a big book, it's a fantasy book, so it is over 600 pages. But it's it's one of those things that because so many people are raving about it, I'm just so nervous that I won't like it, you guys. I ended up caving to try and force myself to read this, because if I end up loving this, I'll probably end up like loving it with a big L, which means I would have to have the other two books on hand in order to be able to keep going with the series. So I did buy myself parts two and three now to make it more enticing for me to read it because this is another one of those things where I'm just like, if I hate this, you know, I don't know where I, where I would have to go with myself. I'm gonna have to doubt my reading tastes, I guess. And it's just one of those things that because so many people love it, I get nervous because I'm afraid to not love it. And then it just sits on my shelf and sits on my shelf. My friend told me, I think a decade ago to read this. And then she ended up just buying me this book. And she was like, you like this. And I'm like, I don't know. So I'm not entirely sure on this one. I'm just so, so scared to not like it that I just don't get around to it. But like I said, I now have the other two books. I need to stop making excuses. I don't think I'll get around to it this year, but this is definitely gonna go onto my TBR for 2021, like the entire series. I need to read the tri Miss Bourne trilogy within like now and a year for sure. All right, and then another thing that is intimidating to me is the continuation of the Percy Jackson series. That's just what I'm gonna call it. But Rick Riordan wrote the Percy Jackson series, as we all know, and then he followed it up by the Heroes of Olympus. And I read the first one, The Lost Hero, and I thought it was the same as Percy Jackson. So I felt it was Percy Jackson, but with a slightly different character, and it had the same jokes and the same things, and I was like, okay. So we have another four books in this series, and they get bigger which, with each book. I'm not sure if I, I'm down with that. So I actually, maybe I should just read the second one and see what it's all about. But I, I don't think I'll like this very much because I didn't love the first one. I just thought it was too samey, samey, a bit tropey. It was just repeating itself too much like compared to what was going on in the Percy Jackson series. I think that I would love his Norse mythology series so much more than this one because for real this is just it it sounds repetitive you know so that's why since i still have four books to go and i kind of just stopped because i was like what's the point i do have all five of them because i was so into percy jackson and i just bought every rick byer the books that that was coming out for a while there so i have like a shelf filled with just rick byerden and i've only read the percy jackson stuff so this by now is just intimidating 
because I want to read his other stuff, but because I didn't like this first one very much, I now kind of feel stumped. Does that make sense? I, do, do I make sense in this video? I'm not entirely sure. All right, so that was Percy Jackson, and then I have some bigger books for you as well. Uh, and the first one is one that I picked up not too long ago, and it's The Luminaries by Eleanor Catton. This is a book that won the Man Booker Prize in 2013, so usually Man Booker Prize winners are great books, like I love them. But this is another one of those books, you guys. I mean, over 800 pages. Apparently it's told according to the moon cycles and there's like shorter and longer chapters depending on what part of the moon cycle we're in. I mean, it's got a concept behind it. It sounds complicated. But then when I read the blurb on the back, I was like, oh, that sounds really great because it's about people vanishing and unsolved crimes and people trying to solve them. So that sounds like up my street, right? So intimidating because of the size and the fact that it has this concept behind me kind of sets me on edge a little bit. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is one of those things that I'll make a summer read at some point because usually I have summer break and then I have five weeks of nothing. So um, that's coming up shortly, but I already have another book on my TBR for this summer, but it won't be this one. What will be on my TBR is this, Susanna Clarke's Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. This was a BBC television series, I believe. And this is, oh yeah, it's over a thousand pages and the font is okay. It's not too small, not too big. Um, I don't really know what it is about exactly. Oh, it's set in the early 19th century, so it's historical fiction, which I love. I believe this is also quite dark. Oh, it has to do with magicians, somebody who raises a woman from the dead. Okay, something about ghostly ships. And then there's this like challenge between the two characters from the title. So this is why I think I'll like it. Magic, historical setting. I think I will love this. It's just, it's a be a moth of a book. And um, yeah, I, I, I set myself the task to try and read it sometime during summer break, which will be starting on Monday. So I still have a couple of other books to get to first but definitely somewhere like early August, I think I will pick this up. And then to move on to another historical fiction book, and I'm nervous about this one. Uh, this is Imogen Urba's Gowars, The Mermaid and Mrs. Hancock. Um, this book I picked up because it was on this table at Waterstones when I was in London last year, and it's historical fiction. It even won the, no, it was shortlisted for the Women's Prize of Fiction in 2018. And this is a book where I'm like, ooh, the cover is pretty. But I've made that mistake in the past where I've read a historical fiction novel based on the fact that it's got a pretty cover and liking the blurb on the back where it like promises to have this mystical dark element to it. And then it just ended up being a romance novel, which I found was the case with The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. And I'm afraid this will be the same thing, which is why I haven't picked it up yet and in terms of like trying to read it, because this is one of those books where I'm like, I want you to be good. I want you to be a historical fiction novel with mermaids. That's what I want you to be. But I'm not entirely sure whether, whether that's what I'll get from it. So I sort of bought this being like already being on the fence about it, but I was seeing it everywhere when I was in London. So I was like, Ooh, might want to try it. So now I own it, but I haven't yet had the inkling to really read it. So yeah, this is one that just makes me nervous because I, I've, I've come across too many historical fiction books that promise a very interesting uh, like premise and then it ends up being a bit disappointing in the end. So I'm hoping this will be okay. Fingers crossed. And then last but not least, the book, <laughs> you guys. This is a bit shameful. This is a bind up of all three Lord of the Rings books and I've never read anything Lord of the Rings. I attempted to read this three times and I don't think I ever finished the first chapter. <sighs> okay, so that confession is out of the way. Um, it's just, again, one of those things, it has such, such 
epicness to it that I want to love this, but I'm not sure whether I can. And because I haven't read the book, I never watched the movies either. Because I'm one of those people who's like, if I if I think I like if I have the book and I want to read the book first, I will make an effort to read it first. And I just never did with this. And then you know, me having majored in English, I've done tons of stuff on Beowulf, which you know, Tolkien used to make this fantasy world combined with like lots of other things he was experienced with. And I'm like, knowing all of this background and this being voted like the best book of all time, like so many times over, again, it's just such a pressure that if you haven't read it, people will go like, what? You've never read Lord of the Rings before? And then at the same time, I'm like, but dude, I have a bind up here that's again over a thousand pages. I'm not going to be done with this anytime soon. This is one of those books that, you know, I think you just need to dip in every once in a while. And that's not the kind of reading that I like to do. <sighs> Again, summer project at some point in time, but I don't think anytime soon because I'm just afraid I won't love it. That, that's it. Because I tried reading it a few times. Like I sat down, I was like, I'm going to read this. And then I just felt like, no. So actually what I think I may want to do in the future, if I am serious about reading it, is that I want to pick up the three individual books because this is just, it's just overwhelming to look at a thousand pages. Maybe if I have them as three separate books, my brain might think it to be more manageable. Is that, I don't, am I even making sense in this video? I don't know, I really don't. I hope you catch my drift. So yeah, that will be Lord of the Rings. So there you have it. Those are the 10 most intimidating books that are currently on my shelves. I'm pretty sure I could have found like five more quite easily. So maybe we need to do a retake of this video in a couple of months time. Who knows? I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make one video a week over on this channel. So please stay tuned till next Friday. See you then. Bye-bye.